So clearly we're having an effect on the unions lately by telling the truth that they don't want you to hear. So active employees, this is really for you. This message is for you. You need to listen up. Clearly Michael Mulgrew is getting pissed off because he's been spreading more misinformation. Um, recently, he had a, a board meeting and then this week he's supposed to have a general membership meeting, which many of our retirees are complaining that they can't get into, that they're supposed to register for the meeting, but it's not permitting them in. So he's trying to keep the retirees from actually hearing the message, a message that they're supposed to be able to hear because they're dues paying retirees of their retiree chapter. But what is the lies that they're spreading? Well, Michael Mulgrew and Vinnie Gaglione are trying to say that this proposed change to the to Administrative Code 12-126, that's the law that we won our lawsuit on when we sued the city to for stop them from forcing us into a Medicare Advantage plan, that this proposed change will only affect Medicare eligibles. That's a lie. Um, the law right now, 12-126, says that it, the city will pay for the full cost up to the HIP HMO rate for every employee, retiree, and their dependents. And that HIP HMO rate is about $819, I believe. Um, so let's just type round numbers off and say about $1,000 a month. A Medicare eligible retiree, our plans um, cost about $400 with our Medicare premium is um, our Medicare premium is uh, about $170 and our GHI senior care is about $190. So just say $400, round it off. An active workers plan, your plan's about $1,000 a month. A family plan is over $1,000, well over $1,000 in some cases. So it's a, it, when, this, when you hear the union say that retiree health care is bankrupting the city or bankrupting the union, that's a lie, okay? Um, we're not bankrupting anybody. There's a reason why things are bankrupt and we'll get to that. But the change that they put in, the code right now states that the city will pay up to about $1,000 a month for every one of us. Our plans I've already told you are very inexpensive. The city plan component is only about 200 a month. The active workers plans, those are more expensive, okay? Um, it also reimburses us for our Medicare B reimbursement, which is the first part of our health care as a retired person that takes care of the first 80% of our medical bills. That's about 170, so that's how you get your $400 a month. Um, so it's not it's not that retirees' uh, health care costs are astronomical. They really aren't. The problem is, is that the unions, specifically Michael Mulgrew, agreed to health care savings and reducing the city's utilization, the employees and retirees' utilization of their health care plans in order to save the city money so that he can get a contract. That's why we're in this situation. So when everyone says to you that it's because the city's going bankrupt or don't worry, this will only affect retirees, well, guess what? You are going to be a retiree. And... This isn't, this isn't happening because of why they're saying. It's not because of skyrocketing costs. It was because of bad union deals. And we'll get to that in a moment. Michael Mulgrew and the UFT are also saying that the judge's decision took away your collective bargaining rights and took away your choice. So they have to make this proposed language in order to give you choice. Eh, that's wrong too. You've always had choice. You have had choice since 1947 when these plans went online. Every single year, you have choice. You have between 11 and 14 plans to choose from. You've always had it. This didn't take it away. The judge's decision actually solidified your protections under the administrative code. And how did he do that? The city is trying to say that us Medicare eligible retirees, that our, our benchmark shouldn't be the HIP HMO rate, but it should be whatever rate that they choose, which is HIP VIP in their opinion. They dropped the rate from $188 to $7.50 overnight. And they said, those Medicare eligible retirees, the benchmark rate is $7.50. So we only have to pay $7.50 for those Medicare eligible people every single month. If they want a plan that's $200, they have to pay the difference. See how they transferred the cost to a retired person? That's not what we negotiated or bargained for or agreed to. And that's not what the statute says. And the judge agreed with us. The judge said, no, you can't drop a plan to $7.50 and peg it to them. The law states that you have to, the city has to pay for every employee, retiree, and their dependents up to the HIP HMO rate. If the HIP HMO rate is $890, you have to pay up to that plan, up to that rate. But since their plans are $200 a month, what the hell does it matter? Right? That's what we thought. But no. So they're going to change the code. Why? Because I believe they think they're going to lose in October. I think they know they're going to lose in October. I think we are going to win. And how are they going to get around the judge's decision? 
to meet the savings that they promised the city that they would make? Change the law. That's the only way they're going to be able to force retirees into the one plan that they want you in, stripping you of all your choices. But see, that wasn't good enough. Because this process has taken two years worth of savings from the MLC and the unions, that meant that they had promised the this, this city $600 million a year in savings, that that's what the city told them that they would get if that they would get, that they would put into the health insurance stabilization fund and their welfare fund, $600 million, if the union successfully forced retirees into one single plan, Medicare Advantage. That $600 million they were banking on because they've been using the stabilization fund for illegitimate purposes. Legal, but still illegitimate. So they used the health insurance stabilization fund, which sets the equalization to, between GIP, GHI and HIP, and also funds your welfare funds for the teacher raises in 2014. And for other things, the city uses it for our slush fund, fill budget caps. Um, but $1 billion went to Michael Mulgrew to pay for the UFT contract. Yeah, did you know that? Because when you your union negotiated your contracts, the city had to pay for it, you had to do productivity, right? Michael Mulgrew's contract got paid by you and me. Fact. When did that happen? Why did that happen? Why is he allowed to go and set this precedent where he can go into the city and sign a contract that his wages are predicated upon the rest of the unions in the city giving something up? And why don't any of the other unions have a pair of cojones to stand up to him and say, no, no buddy, this isn't gonna happen, but just let it happen. And now we're in this situation. So two years have transpired. The unions owe about $1.2 billion to the city. So Michael Mulgrew got his first quid pro quo. Here's the second. Last week in the MLC meeting, they were told, the unions were told, well, we owe the city $1.2 billion. The city said they'd be willing to eat the, that debt if you do a few things for us. One, change the law. Two, stick those retirees into a Medicare Advantage plan. Three, put out an RFP to replace the employee's plan. Guess what? We told you last year they're coming after you and they are. They are going to look to put all of you active workers into an HMO plan. They forced the new hires into HIP HMO. They'll probably look to extend that term from whatever it is, 16 months now to three to five years, and then force the rest of all of you into the same plan. They're going to try to force everybody into that that's active or non-Medicare eligible. So that's the second quid pro quo. Do you want that to happen? Changing the law is the only, is, it, it is dangerous because that was the only thing you had to protect you. Your collective bargaining agreements don't set any minimums that the city has to pay, the law did. And the reason why it's not in any of your collective bargaining agreements that the city, you are entitled to healthcare paid for by the city is because it was in the statute not your collective bargaining agreements. You give this up, that's the last thing you have. You now open the door to ever annually increasing premiums and additional co-insurances. Can you handle that? Because I know we can't. Our pensions are small. And that's the truth. So Michael Mulgrew, Harry Nispoli, Henry Garrido, Greg Floyd, to the 40 unions that didn't, that didn't even show up to the meeting, to the four unions that abstained, and to the 48 unions that voted to pass the legislative changes to send to the city council, shame on all of you. This now moves to the city council. And everyone hearing this message, you'd better be there to speak out against this. Or you might get a 1.5% raise in your paycheck this year but you will now be giving all that money and then some back to the city. Oh, and another quick note while my dog is snoring in the corner. Uh, the teachers have a moratorium clause. I don't know if you're aware of it. It's a state law that actually protects the teachers, a, teach a retired teacher. The law states that they can't do to a retired teacher that they're not doing to an active employee. So if they do something to the retiree and diminish their benefit, they have to diminish it to the employee as well which prohibits them generally from diminishing a benefit to a retiree. But guess what? None of us have that protection. That is only for UFT, 
Department of Ed, school district employees. That's it. You think Michael Mulgrew is still not playing you until he's telling you the truth? He's lying to every single one of you. And you're letting him do it. Hope you wake up, guys. Tick tock. Clock is ticking. The, the, our future, your health benefits, our health benefits, they're in your hands. Come out to city council when this hits the hearing and vote against this and tell city council not to listen to these corrupt unions. Stand up for yourselves. And the unions that voted no, you better be standing with us because this fight is all of ours. Have a good night.